how you doing? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins. I'm author of the book, Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About College. Now, I've been teaching on college campuses for about uh, 20 plus years. And uh, one of the things that I uh, have observed is that there is a huge racism problem on a lot of American campuses, uh, including some HBCUs, believe it or not. Uh, HBCUs have a lot of black students, but they're not always run by black people. And they don't always support uh, the agenda that works best for the black community. But uh, even beyond HBCUs, we know a lot of predominantly white universities have severe problems when it comes to uh, low percentages of minority faculty, uh, horrendous uh, discomfort uh, that black students have to go through on those campuses where they're being uh, mistreated, going through these nasty racial incidents and the university isn't responding properly. Uh, you have a problem with the curriculum. Uh, I think that the students uh, and the racism of some of the students is a reflection of the lack of, of, of cultural sensitivity training as well as a lack of um, a lack of curriculum that really reflects the diversity of the world in which we live. Uh, if if you see a 19, 20 year old white kid doing something that doesn't make any sense, something that's really racist, you have to look at the the people that are teaching that child and the people that raise that child. That's where all this starts. So what I want to do is I want to just quickly give some uh, give any college students who are listening or parents of students or friends of college students who are listening. Uh, some ideas on how you can affect change on your campus. Right now, we're in an unprecedented era of opportunity when it comes to making adjustments on campuses. Uh, when when I was at the University of Kentucky in, in the 90s, we had a protest after a black woman, a young black student had a knife put to her throat by a white student uh, because the student had written a letter in support of one of my articles and talked about the racism. So just because she talked about the racism, somebody threatened to kill her uh, on campus. And the campus administration didn't want to do anything about it because they had their black basketball players who were about to play in the Final Four and they were going to lose a lot of money if they got that negative publicity. And so uh, at that time, when we did our protest, we protested on this thing for about a month and a half, and we got some change done. But at the same time, it would have been great if we could have gotten the athletes to get behind us the way they did at the University of Missouri. Uh, at that time, the athletes were afraid. The athletes were too caught up in you know, in, the, in the distractions, the bling, the girls, you know, the, the, the fame and all this other stuff that they felt disconnected from the other black students on campus, which is kind of unfortunate. That happens in a lot of places. So sometimes you can get the athletes to help you, sometimes not. But the uh, power of the black athlete is enormous. That's why you notice at the University of Missouri, the minute they got, the minute the athletes got involved and said they weren't going to play, the university folded. They toppled down the entire presidency of that campus. That's very, very powerful. Uh, I wish we could have done that. We, we, um, I, I remember going back and forth with the president on our campus, and I learned a few things from that, and I'll share that with you uh, in, in this quick conversation. Uh, the first thing I want to, uh, first piece of advice I want to give students who want change on their campus, who want their campuses to be better, is, uh, is really you don't want to be overly patient. You don't want to be overly tolerant. You don't want to accept excuses uh, that regularly. I mean, some things they really can't do, but most of the time when you present anything to an administration, first thing they're going to do is they're going to lean on tradition. They're going to lean on the way things have always been done. They're, they're going to lean on the way the, the most comfortable approach to things. They're testing you. They want to see how serious you are. And if they tell you, oh, well, you know, yeah, we see you want an extra $2,000 in your budget for the Black Student Union, but, um, you know, we really can't. We're having budget cuts, blah, blah, blah. That's nonsense. Let me tell you why. A lot of campuses will spend fifty to a hundred thousand dollars bringing in one speaker. Sometimes, if they, you know, for commencement or for some big event, uh, they will spend money spending spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on superstar faculty. They will spend millions of dollars on a football or basketball coach. So when something matters to them, they get the money. These universities have billions in their endowments, so they've got the money to do pretty much anything you want them to do. The question is, can you make them do it? So don't be patient. Don't just sort of let them stall you because a stall tactic. Tactic is a very, um, a very powerful strategy for administrators because here's the thing: they're going to be there for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. You're going to be gone in a couple semesters, maybe a year or two, or whatever. In the summertime, your whatever your movement is is probably going to dip off because student interest is going to decline. Uh, when when the leader of the, the of the uh, movement graduates. Uh, a lot of movements die on campus and I didn't understand it at the time but I remember when I was 25 years old I remember the president of the university his name was Charles Worthington III at the time I used to mess with him in the campus paper I called him Chuck uh, I remember Chuck 
um, used to every time I saw him on campus, he would say, "So when, when do you graduate again?" And and I didn't know it at the time, but I really speculate that the reason he kept asking me that is because he wanted to know when is this troublemaker going to leave my campus. So when they stall you, what they're doing is they're trying to just get to the end of the semester, try to get to the end of your academic career, so that they don't have to worry about this anymore because they know how powerful you are. Unfortunately, in many cases, you don't know how powerful you are. Um, the second thing I would say is develop a committed core. You see, a lot of people think that in order to push this mass movement that you need hundreds of people and thousands of people. You don't need that. You really need about six or seven or maybe ten uh, just really dedicated people, just a strong core. Just It could be you and your friends that just all wear the same T-shirt. Look at look at the University of Missouri and the way they beautifully pulled off their movement. I think the group was called um, uh, Concerned Student 1950 or something like that. They didn't have that many people, from what I understand. From what I saw, when I first saw their movement, they had less than 10 people that were in this group, but they were 10 very determined people, and that's what made the difference. That's how they were able to sh you know, shoot the shot that was heard around the world. They took down the entire university president. They just had some really determined people, and then when they started moving forward and they were very consistent, other people joined in, and then the football players supported them, and next thing you know, the president was going down. But even if the football players hadn't helped him out, I really think they would have got a lot done on their campus. So all you need is a commitment core and then if you're successful if you achieve a couple of victories uh, push to get some uh, some attention to what you're doing then you'll find other people will join the bandwagon most people most people unfortunately are not really leaders most people are followers they kind of follow whatever it is trendy so uh, if you're a leader go out there and lead don't be afraid don't be don't let them distract you um, the next next thing I would say is uh, make sure you study other movements around the country there are movements right now with black students all in, in campuses everywhere uh, you got students at Yale they were uprising uh, VCU uh, of course you University of Missouri. I think I saw a couple more. Um, you know, I think the UCLA students a couple years ago were doing things that I thought were very impressive. Study what they do. You know, study. Uh, you know, do they dress? Do they all dress alike? Um, how do they? Uh, what 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 tactic did they use that actually got the result done? What what did their list of demands look like when they when they protested? What was their strategy? Like how did they get the attention of the administration? You know, study all that. I mean, you, you got the blueprints. You got the blueprints out there right in front of you, right there on the internet. Look it up. Study it. Lay out a list of of approaches, and then boom, go in there and make it happen. Um, the, the next thing I would say is uh, when you go in there and you you decide, let's say you go and you, you, you storm the administrator's office or whatever, you push to get attention to what you're doing. Uh, a couple things. Number one, make sure you use social media. Social media is very important. Uh, maybe hashtags, maybe tweeting heavily about it. Set up a Facebook page, like a Facebook group uh, on, on this core issue. May have a closed group that's private and then an open group that's public. And uh, and then maybe if you, have any, if you can get a few dollars, maybe you have somebody push some Facebook advertising. Advertising on, on the movement if you want to, but that's not necessary. Uh, gather email addresses of people that believe in your movement. So have your, um, you know, as people join your page, have them sign up to an email list so you can reach out to your people whenever you want to. Uh, try to start reaching out to the press, local press, and then national press. Um, they they tend to like controversy, so let them know if something's popping off on your campus uh, or you're about to do something. Uh, go ahead and get the media involved. Bring that attention and bring that pressure, and uh, that's really important. I think social media is one of the great tools that you have. YouTube is an obvious uh, game changer. Uh, you can do YouTube videos very, very cheaply. Uh, just make sure you know what you want to say. Make it organized. Uh, bring attention to the issues. Make sure you have your facts, too. You know, get some statistics and data on your campus. Most campuses, unfortunately, have an absolutely atrocious, I'm talking about atrocious, I'm talking about Jim Crow era uh, uh, record when it comes to hiring and tenuring black professors. Um, and that's huge. I mean, I know that uh, in all the years I went to school, I went to school for a long time. I never once had a black professor. And I was in school from the age of 18 to, to the age of 31 because I got my Ph.D. And, my, and several master's degrees and all that. So think about that. I was in school 13 years, take, going full time the entire time. I never, ever once had a black professor. Uh, and that's not uncommon. Uh, you know, when I my mentors, two of my mentors I met at Kentucky and Ohio State, both of them were the only black professors to ever be tenured to be, ever be given a promotion in the history of the entire business school which is astonishing given that both business schools had about a hundred faculty members so this is really sick I mean, this is really um, this is really cause for concern. What it does is it affects your ability to relate to your teachers. Uh, imagine if I was your teacher. I mean, you you probably relate to me a little bit better than you could this you know the the white guy down the hall because I understand who you are, I understand your culture, I understand where you come from. Now I'm not going. I'm, I'm not interested in teaching in teaching on anybody else's campus. I'm I'm done with that stuff for a while. Uh, maybe for good, but who knows? You never know. But what I will say is that there are lots of talented young black professors out here who would love to get opportunities to teach on their campus. Don't let them tell you that they can't find qualified black people. 
that's bullshit excuse my french that is nonsense that's not true they can there there are talented black scholars out here they just have to want to they just have to know how to look for them and if they have to pay a little more to get to to draw attention to those people that are qualified then pay a little bit more uh what happens a lot of times is these black professors will interview with these schools and they'll go in they'll do the interview and there's no oversight there's no accountability so they'll do an interview and do a presentation and then for some reason they'll just say oh well we don't think you're a fit for our campus and what that really means is that we just don't really want you but we don't have to tell anybody why and unfortunately there are lots of racial biases that come into play particularly against African Americans which make them nitpick what you've done so you're you know you're some superstar uh, you know scholar you graduated from a top university and you've done amazing work and you're clearly qualified to do the job I mean whether you're qualified is not a question the question is are you perfect that that's that can be the question some people ask and if you're not perfect then they'll say oh well you know we saw this little thing on his resume we didn't like it blah 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 don't let them do that have them put students on the hiring committees uh, for these professors so that your voice can be heard too and if, if there's an injustice you can go speak on it and get other people involved um, the other things uh, some things that you may want to put on your list of demands might be obviously the issue with black scholars go figure out how many black professors you have on your campus tenured not just visiting that's the other thing too uh, the difference between a visiting professor um, and a the, the difference between a visiting professor a tenure track <clears throat> and a tenure professor <clears throat> is like the difference between um, between your wife uh, your your steady long-term girlfriend and the woman that you slept with uh, last night right that, that think about those three tiers and basically what a lot of campuses will do is to mask the lack of diversity problem. They'll put a lot of black people in administrative positions or they'll put them in visiting positions. So they'll bring somebody in for a year or two, but, but they don't make them a part of the permanent university infrastructure. But that's where the rules are changed. That's where things happen is with the tenured faculty who are there 20, 30 years who push at these faculty senate meetings and get things changed, who truly represent the black students. If you have a professor there who's there for two or three years, they're thinking about their research. Uh, they're trying to figure out how to keep their job. They're probably not being paid very well. Uh, you want tenured professors on your campus. That's really what you want to aim for. Um, uh, the curriculum, uh, obviously the curriculum is, is a no-brainer. Uh, a lot of campuses have curriculum that, that was designed by people who don't like you many, many years ago. Uh, it's time to change that. you got to demand some changes to the curriculum. Have everybody take a class on black history. Uh, have black history incorporated into American history throw in something sociological that has to do with the blight and the struggles of black people in this country those are some things you might aim for go look at other uh, other um, other campuses that have curriculum that you think might be good for your campus and then add that in um, the, the next thing is um, um, some sort of sensitivity training um, I just think that uh, unfortunately a lot of young college students, white students especially, don't. Uh, they, they, many of them have never been taught how to uh, how to behave around black people in the sense of how to just be respectful. Um, you, you know, you just see them do some things that are, that where they got off some sort of hip hop music video, and they think every black person is supposed to be okay with that, and it's, and it's not okay. It's very hurtful. It's not fair. Um, I remember when I was at the University of Kentucky, and I remember, um, you know, I remember when. Um, I was in, uh, a resident advisor for for my dorm, and I was in charge of a whole floor full of white guys who were on the swimming team, and uh, and I put uh, my instructions up, my rules for the floor, and I think I put heed the words of the brother, which came from this group of from back in the day called X Clan, one of the baddest rap groups ever. They rapped all about Africa and stuff like that. But imagine imagine a group rapping about Africa and Black Pride being like number one on the charts. That's what X Clan was. Go look up X Clan. X C L A N baddest group ever anyway x clan <clears throat> had a song called heed the words of the brother <clears throat> and i put the words heed the words of the brother at the top and they and um you know i i just remember that and i remember you know i remember how mad i was i, was, I remember being ready to fight i wasn't hurt i was mad i wanted to kick somebody's ass and um you know and it's just kind of it was just interesting seeing the university squ you know squirm around that because they didn't really want to address the core issue uh, which is the fact that these students had never been trained to be respectful to other cultures, that this white male arrogance was allowed to exist on this campus unchecked, unquestioned. Uh, they just sort of wanted to fix it real quick. And so they moved me to a different dorm, <clears throat> tried to get it behind me, and, and moved on. So so if you want your kids uh, to have a different environment than the one you had, here's the thing. Uh, I'd made some changes on my campus, but about 20 years later when my goddaughter went to that same university um, she was still fighting for the same things I fought for as an undergraduate so I think you gotta ask yourself if I have kids one day and my children go to my alma mater um, do I want them fighting for the same things that I fought for when I was an undergrad I, do I want them to have to go through the same battles same struggles same stressors that I went through as an undergrad 
Um, if the answer is no, which it should be no, um, make a change. Go for it. Don't be afraid. Be focused. Make it happen. Don't let them scare you. You will get it done. Last point I'd throw in there is uh, if you got a black student union or other organizations, don't be afraid to ask for budget increases as, as one of your demands. Look, <clears throat> you know, you give us 3000 a year. The rest we have to go and beg the fact the, the the student government for, and they don't like us because none, very few of them are black. We don't want to do that. We want that budget to be increased from three thousand to ten thousand a year, so we can we can do what we want to do. We can bring in Dr. Cornell West. We can we can do a Black Lives Matter event. We can do <clears throat> whatever we want. We can offer tutoring to black students if we want to. Um, you know, get try to try to make make some of those things happen. Don't be afraid. So that's all I want to share with you. I just had to share that it was on my heart this morning. So when something's on my heart, that's when I know. I have to tell people. So I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from the Black Business School. Please take care. God bless. I'm gone. Peace.